So here's a little update on my microcontroller collection that I'm using for my projects. I have a new uh, member to the family to add, so I thought I'd introduce that and just let you know where things are at with uh, pricing and things like that in case you want to use them with your project. Now, there are a lot of other different microcontroller uh, or Arduino compatible microcontrollers out there. There are so many that I could never ever cover them. So what I'm trying to find are the workhorses, the things that you can use and feel comfortable that there's good support and uh, use them for a wide range of your projects. So that's that's my selection. Uh, other people have different selections, so that's fair enough as it is. So as you've seen before, I have my Arduino Uno and uh, Nano, which are basically the same thing except different form factor. I'm working with my Blue Pill, STM32 series, and I'm also starting to use uh, the Black Pill as well, which is the STM32 series as well, but it's a new chipset, a 411 series, or 400 series, if you'd like to call it that way. And I am also have been using, and you've seen it in my project before, this AT Tiny uh, 85, uh, which is extremely small and a nice little form factor as well. So they're all different types of uses that I have for these chipsets. Really, the, the Uno is really for light experimentation and things like that. I, I don't really see me using the Atmega 328, I believe it is, uh, processor in any of my real projects. I, I won't say that definitely, but it's probably unlikely. I usually just use that for quick experimentation. And, you know, it's going to plug in and work with the Arduino IDE every time. So it's very easy and comfortable to use. The Blue Pills and the STM series is a little less comfortable. Sometimes you have to reload the bootloader and mess around with it a bit. But generally, it's pretty good once you get it up and running. Super fast, super powerful, lots of RAM, lots of ROM, lots of capability in these chips here. And the AT Tiny is a little bit of a form factor issue, really. It's fast enough. It doesn't have much flash or uh, SRAM space. It doesn't have much of anything, really. It's only got really five usable IOs. So it's very limited what you can use. But if you have something that doesn't need many IOs and just flick a timer or something like that or flick LED or, or do something very minimalistic, this is obviously uh, the best option given its form factor. So what I've been looking at, and I've looked at it before, is I quite like this AT Tiny series, but I do not like uh, its capability uh, in general or programming space or anything else. IO is definitely too much of a crunch in most applications, so it's very limited. But I, I like the idea of this very compact form factor. And I had been looking at other versions of this, and I had looked at it before and noticed there were a few different series. But recently I looked at again, and the reason I looked again was because uh, Ben Heck had been using it in one of his projects, and he had actually put out a community message saying that there were finally some chips in stock and I'd looked at the chip before and this is this uh, AT Tiny 1616 uh, 16. and in fact it was in stock it seems that the manufacturers uh, given the uh, semiconductor sort of crunch issue that we're having at the minute have been focusing on just producing certain more gener generic chip lines in, in bulk instead of producing all of the different versions of the chip so this chip came out in quantity and at a reasonable price um, it's around about around about US two dollars per chip is what it's going at the market right now you probably may not be able to get at that price so i was lucky enough to snag this at a reasonable price on iris components out of the uk for around about two us dollars per chip on this tape type reel they were selling in minimum quantities of 10. it's definitely a good deal you know obviously we're going to have to place it onto this chip carrier here for our experimentation um, if i was doing something more serious maybe i'd print my own pcb but as usual i will do something like this and we can see that the form factor is quite compact. It's about half the size of a, of a nano, which is nice and still very compact. Let's have a look at the capabilities of these chips. I have my old, um, I updated a sheet that I was tracking on the prices and things like that. So we can have a look. And if we have a look here, the current market price for everything has gone up a lot. So for example, the blue pill, which I use in my mini lathe project here, it's basically twice the price that I was paying before. Still a very good value uh, solution and still worth it, but you know, twice the price sort of makes it a little bit more painful for small applications and things like that. And Black Pill also, you know, all of these have probably gone up about twice the price. Now, this particular vendor on AliExpress, the pricing here is in US dollars, obviously. The way that they did the shipping is that if you increase the quantity, the shipping seemed to stay the same. So that was, that's, you know, in AliExpress, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Either the, the shipping doubles or the shipping stays the same or increases slightly. In this case, the shipping was pretty stable. So obviously, in this case, the more you buy, uh, the cheaper the per uh, microcontroller price is. So it's quite reasonable. And Arduino, Uno, and Nano, again, about roughly about twice the price. And in this case, the shipping was doubling every time I increased the quantity. So this is pretty much the unit price I expect. And AT Tiny 85, I did manage to find one vendor using free shipping for a quantity of 10 for $17.40. And $17.40, a buck 74 per chip, 
and to be honest, that's just way too much. I mean, I paid with shipping uh, for a quantity of 10 around about 50 uh, cents. If I remember correctly, it might be a little bit more. So, you know, that's nearly three to four times the price that these are really actually worth, I would say. So AT Tiny is not really a good value option here. And I also just want to quickly focus on some of the capabilities of this chip so you can get in your mind what might be good or bad for your project. And before we do that, maybe we should touch on the AT Tiny price here. You can see here, this was a price that I picked up off AliExpress, uh, $1.81 per unit and uh, 55 cents for shipping. It sort of reflects the RS components price I paid, and it probably is unlikely that this is a fake. It looked like a, a, a reputable or somewhat reputable AliExpress store. So there was some in stock there. Uh, I couldn't see any in stock on my quick search on RS components. It seems like what I had already got was probably already sold out. But still, $2.36 is a pretty reasonable price for the capability of the chip. The thing to note about Arduino Uno and Nano is this Atmega uh, 328 chip. It's, it is quite old, and I believe we can say that the IO or the way that you can use the IOs, at least in the in the uh, Arduino domain, is fairly limited. So you don't have a lot of flexibility of what IOs you can use for what. And it has moderately capable, specialized capabilities, but it's not, well, you know, the only way to put it is it's, it's old, right? So you can't expect that it's going to have anything too dramatically great in it compared to what is being released today. 20 IOs is, is nice, but as I said, a lot of these have sort of dedicated usages. So how you see that is how you see it. The flash and the SRAM is quite capable, more than enough, so I think there's no complaints there. Uh, and even the one kilobyte of dedicated EEPROM, which usually has a higher writable cycle rate that you can have on this dedicated EEPROM, so it's, it's been hardened compared to the normal flash. So this is, I think in the memory standpoint, it's quite good, and speed at 16 meg is okay. It's, uh, for current today's standard, it's not fast. It's I'd say it's on the slower side of things, but it's okay. It's usable for a lot of applications. And the ATtiny A5 pretty much follows the general speed capabilities. The peripherals that has the ATtiny has, um, when you look at the data sheet, and I'm not gonna go through it here, is extremely limited. It doesn't have a lot of capability, um, limited time, and it has lim limited communication capabilities, no digital analog converter or anything like that. The flash space, eight kilobytes, terrible, and a disaster if you put a, a bootloader on it, it's only six kilobytes. It's, it's nigh on unusable at that size. But for small applications, you can sort of make it do something. 512 of RAM, again, terrible. And 512 bytes of EEPROM. In this environment, it seems like overkill, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's the point? And then the five IOs, not good, terrible. So really the only thing this, this had going for it is that it has a very compact form factor and that it was pretty cheap at 50 cents a unit. And since it's not cheap anymore, it, it doesn't have much going for it anymore at all. And I'm going to skip the AT Tiny for a 1616 16 for a second. We have a look at the blue pills here. 72 megahertz on the blue pills. I experienced this is crazy fast, you know, easily four or more times faster than an, an Uno uh, in real, you know, if, if you're updating display or doing anything, it's really, really quite capable. More than fast enough is what I'd say for nearly anything you want to do. So this 72 megahertz is a big deal in my mind. The flash at 32 kilobits um, for the smaller blue pill and the SRAM is quite good. But to be honest, for this type of capable chip uh, with this many IOs, I would call the uh, the 66 version of the chip quite a bad buy. I wouldn't buy this. I think it's not really uh, good. And the reason I say that is because if you're going to use the blue pill, you're using it for its speed, you're probably going to use it for a pretty intense application. And that means you're going to need programming space. And I can, I can put uh, a realistic aspect to that is that after just doing the experimenting, uh, you know, setting up the IOs and, and not really doing any user interface or anything with my mini lathe, the 8T6 version of the chip, which has 64 kilobytes noted capacity, actually I ran out of space. I mean, I, I was gonna be forced to go to the black pill straight away. Um, and it was only that I'd read an article online and I'd noticed that, that the 8T6 is actually built in such a way that I think they, when they were manufacturing, they manufactured it with two 64K blocks. And then depending on, uh, you know, if one of the blocks were bad, they would actually only enable one or the other of the blocks. So effectively these had 128 kilobytes off the bat. And if I understand correctly, the yield rate ended up being much higher than I expected. So actually all of these 8T6 chips have effectively 128 kilobytes of flash memory. 
And there is an ability in, uh, there's an option you can select in Arduino Uno to program them as 128K. So this was a lifesaver for me. If I hadn't have discovered this, I would have been dead in the water with trying to use this with the mini lathe, that's for sure. But even so, 128 kilobytes of programming in Flash, I, and using all of the different fonts that I built for myself for the mini lathe, I managed to use that up completely. It was full. So, yeah, you can say that I was really pushing the limits of the blue pill for that application as you've seen it. And maybe I didn't write the code all that efficiently, who knows. But, you know, I think for a general person, um, I would say that the blue pill in this mode, as it's balanced here, is quite okay. It's just on the balance of being pretty good. But when you look at the next item here, the uh, 401 black pill and the comparative prices it is today, and this isn't the comparative price it was before. Before this was around about $2 for the 8T6 and around about uh, 3 or $4 for the 401, maybe $4 for the 401. No, I think it was about $3, $3.50 or something for the 401 before. And we now see that the 401 is actually faster. Uh, even taking into consideration the 128 kilobytes of flash, 256 uh, kilobytes flash is just killing it. Uh, 64 kilobytes of uh, static RAM just killing it. And uh, we'll talk about the IOs in a second. So if you were looking at which one of these two, and something I didn't touch on as well, is that the, the, the peripherals and the way they can be allocated across all the different IOs and Os is much more stronger in the, uh, in the 400 series compared to the 100 series here. So this uh, 401 is this far, far superior in every single category compared to the 86. So if I was doing something today and looking at these price points, say for example that mini lathe, I would probably go for the 401 black pill um, because it's definitely going to make your life a lot easier once your program starts to get pretty big. So the 411 uh, is a bit of a sad story unfortunately uh, because the price is more than double now the 401. And I bought these, I literally bought these for around about $4.50 or maybe $5 uh, when I was buying this. So again, we're seeing a doubling of the prices. So if your application absolutely needed this 512 kilobytes of flash, or double that space, or that more SRAM, or that 100 megahertz speed, if it's really critical for you, then of course it's going to be worth spending the extra money. But as it stands for most of your projects, I believe probably right now for your large scale general projects, the 401 is probably where you want to be at. So if you were going to stock up and have a bulk of these on hand, you know, something you could feel comfortable to have five or six of them on hand and program them, switch them around and, and feel happy they're going to cover most of your projects, that STM32 F401 looks really good right now. So that's what I recommend. So let's highlight that. You've got to have a Nuno, right? The Nano. I don't know, I, and I, to be honest, I don't really see me using it in any projects. It's nice to sort of have it. Is it a must have? No, it's not a must have, that's for sure. AT Tiny, again, you know, not really a must have, and the capability is not good. So I would say the must have here would have to be this AT Tiny 1616. So let's talk about the 1616. There we go. So uh, 16 megahertz was usually three to eight. This is just running up to 20 megahertz. Now I thought that this would be external crystal, but if I'm reading this correctly, it seems to say that the internal oscillator will support 20 megahertz. Now I don't know if we can do that within the Arduino IDE or not, but you know, that's a bit of a boost, so that's nice. And 16 kilobytes of uh, program memory. So that's about half of a Nuno, which I would say is not fabulous, but it's not uh, game over, that's for sure. And it's uh, a lot better than obviously the uh, eight uh, kilobytes that the, the Tiny had, that's for sure. Two kilobytes of SRAM, which is on par with Uno, obviously. 256 bytes, I mean, this is an, a bit of a letdown. Even the AT Tiny 85 had 512 bytes, and uh, you were looking at one kilobytes with a uh, with an Uno or, or a uh, Nano. So this is a bit of a letdown, I'd say. That's one thing I would probably complain a little bit. You can see the higher cycle rates on the different memory types there, as I was indicating before. And something that's really cool about this chip is just the amount of peripherals it has. It has uh, huge amounts of timers and counters. You know, for example, three uh, analog comparators. I mean, it has three comparators in this. This is crazy, right? Two analog to digital converters, not just one. Three digital to analog converters. Now, I don't know how capable they are. So, and, and also capacitive touch support. I mean, this 
chip is just a monster, right? I really like it. Now, typically when you see all of these peripherals, I don't know how much of them are implemented in the, um, the drivers for Arduino. And as with the SCM32, a lot of these custom peripherals don't work within the standard IDE capabilities of Arduino. So it's usually depending on specialized classes that have been built to, to drive these dedicated or specialized peripherals. And really that's unavoidable. I mean, you, you can't really encapsulate a standard to cover all different types of devices where you just don't know what sort of feature sets are gonna be plugged into them. So that's something you have to live with in Arduino. You think everything is compatible with everything. It's really not. You really end up having very specialized uh, capabilities for different chipsets. But you know, if you're aware of it, you can manage that. And I think it's, it's not the end of the world, that's for sure. So if we look at this uh, chart again, um, here we're definitely killing it on speed or uh, as far as compared to 328, if we get that 20. Flash, well, all right. SRAM, good. EEPROM, not good. But the IO is really good, 17. And peripherals, astounding, basically. For, for a bit over $2, this is definitely a great little solution. And as I said before, the form factor is literally uh, half, around about half the size of a nano. So the form factor is gonna be very, very nice. So there you go, I'm gonna get this onto uh, the carrier and I'll probably have to make another programmer. I'm not really sure how it all works out. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work something similar to how I was programming the, the uh, AT8085. So I'll bring you back after I put it together and we can see if we can at least make it flash and I think that'll probably do it for this episode. So, all right, let me get to it. All right, let's get this chip on there. So I've got my bits here. I'm going to put a decoupling capacitor on the back side of the board. So they've actually designed these boards so that they can have uh, two styles of chips. But I'm going to take advantage of that and stick the, uh, the uh, decoupling capacitor on the back side instead of not having one at all or having to mess around later. So anyway, let's get it on here. Ooh, hoo, hoo. You see the width is pretty here not the ideal position for me let's get that should keep us happy See if we can just do the old stick it on the old trick. Don't make a mess. Well, that one's turned into a disaster. I'll get some flux on that later and fix it up. It's terrible because I haven't done it yet. Come on. Don't want to come off. Come on. Ah, there we go. Come out. Still not coming out. Stuck up. There we go. I know I'm gonna fight with this straight off the bat. So why don't we just wet up one side of this first. Let's see if we get this to be in position. Come on. I'm going to switch to the smaller tip, I can't do this. This is driving me up the wall. Yeah. 100 times better. Just a bit of flux on there. I 
just change the angle a little bit so it's not It's going to go in. Let's get it off here to do that. What do you reckon, folks? Good enough, right? I think we'll pop it in here for this. So you guys can see me making a mess of this. Maybe this small tip is not the way to go. Yeah, that seems alright. I remember doing this the other day on, I think it was on a, a Nano, and I noticed later on that I'd missed a couple of pins. So, so much for the old eyesight. And don't be sucking up those fumes, not good for your health. that you guys seen everything fine sorry I'm not really focusing on what you guys can see I'm sort of focusing on what I can see I didn't stick any flux on this side still doing okay I guess it's just a matter of how long you work it, right? If you work it too long, the flux dies out real quick. There we have it, guys. Complete Amando, huh? Give that a bit of IPA to clean it off. Nice little decoupling capacitor on the back there. AT Tiny sixteen sixteen. Alright, so to save everyone the hassle of watching me solder together this programming board, I'm going to time lapse it, as you can see here. I mean, the board is not that complicated. Fundamentally, all there is to it is the reset pin on the Arduino Uno has this 10 microfarad capacitor connected to it, and then connecting to ground, obviously. And then on the uh, ATtiny 1616, on the reset pin, so I guess it doesn't, it depends on what sort of. Uh, series you're using but as far as I can tell this programming method just uses the reset pin to connect to port uh, 6 on the Arduino Uno and so to connect it you have to connect it with I believe it's a 4.7 K resistor so as simple as that really the two components the 10 microfarad capacitor to the reset on the Uno board and then connecting D6 from the Uno board via a 4.7 K resistor to the reset of the AT Tiny 16 series.
All right, so as you can see, I've managed to complete the board. It looks pretty good. Um, so that's what we'll be using in our test. So let me see if I can get this actually up and running in the Arduino environment. Now, obviously, I've done a bit of research on the internet to find out how to do this, and I'm just going to follow that, and you can follow along, and we'll see if it actually works or not. There is the additional board manager link that we need to add, the JSON file, preferences, and we'll just add it on the end here. I think it's comma delimited, so I'll add a comma, no space. Let's see if that works. So let's open the board manager. Uh, where are we here? And mm, we have to search for mega, mega tiny core. Mega tiny core. Actually, there's already another one, I think, which is different to the one that I've just added. This is the one we want here, right? 16 to 16, yep. It's not this here, 20 pin parts. All right, let's install it. So we're gonna to have to make the Arduino Uno a programmer because I don't have any other way to program uh, this chip at the minute. And according to the information that I found, um, this guy on GitHub, Spence Conde, uh, I think he has a, um, a YouTube video on this as well, so you might wanna check it out. Um, and so all credit to him for this. I'm not showing his information here. Uh, but you need to download this, and uh, I did notice here, he says, <laughs> this tool is not recommended anymore. He also says this was the most unpleasant code base I've had to work with as a programmer. <laughs> it's awful. I think we've all experienced that uh, once or twice. <laughs> it says it took a couple of months to recover from. <laughs> yeah, well, my sympathies, and, but thanks very much, and I'm going to use it anyway. Well, hopefully I'm going to use it, so yeah, thanks very much for that. Um, let's see if it works anyway. I'm not even going to read all the help. I'm just going <laughs> to just see if it works. All right. Um, so I have it open hopefully here. And um, I have no idea what's going on in this. But um, yeah, let's see if it will download to the Uno. <laughs> what am I doing here? Uno, yep, whatever. All right, let's try it. No idea. Hmm. Compiling. All right, something compiled, that's good. And uh, uploaded, hopefully that's good too. <laughs> All right. All right, see if we can try and upload something. This is that uh, thing we made last time. And uh, what are these ports? A2, A3. I'm gonna use ports A4 and A5. And we need to change the board. Tiny Maker Core. Where are we? Mm, 16, 16. Somebody else seeing it? My eyes are failing me. Oh, here we go. And? God, there's lots of things to choose here. I think I'm not going to choose anything. What about the programmer? That's the one. J tag 2 EPDI. Is it going to work, folks? I have no idea. So let me just show you quickly what the setup is. So that's the Arduino Uno. We just uh, program with that uh, programmer. And hopefully this will... Am I here the right way? Doing this all one-handed. So... so hopefully <laughs> we haven't blown anything up. So that's it, and I have the two LEDs running here. So what do you reckon folks, is it going to go, is it going to burn, is it going to fail, I haven't read anything, I haven't checked anything, I think the likelihood of failure is high, anyway let's hit the program button and see what happens, mm hmm, oh, what, expected signature for 80 times 32 16 is a, what, That's, oh 32 16, oh you got to select it here as well, here we go, alright, step by step, at least something might be working. I mean, it seemed to complain, so that's a good sign. I don't know what all that says. Oh. 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 There you go. Look at that. She's a ripper. Straight off the bat. Well, that worked out pretty good, right? We have our nice little uh, 80 tiny 1616 working. So what do you reckon, folks? Looks pretty good, right? So that's about it for this episode, just a quick and dirty one, just to show you guys this uh, nice little chip that I've got myself. 
and uh, I think it might interest some of you out there. I think it's been out for a couple of years. I mean, I'm not always on the bleeding edge of this stuff, and, and to be honest, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be, you know, it's okay to be a couple of years behind, but right now, this looks like a good chip to be on. ATtiny 1660. Go out there, see if you can find it. This guy said, don't use this program, but oh, I don't know if it's working, whatever. I guess it's probably fine. Maybe he just doesn't want to be associated with it after all the development pain. I have no idea. All right, so give the video a, a like, uh, leave a comment, and if you want to see more, then obviously feel free to subscribe, and I hope to catch you in the next episode. So I'll see you then.